Total News, serving the heart of Ontario. On Total News tonight, unemployment continues to rise. A masterpiece in the works. And in sports, the Maple Leafs shuffle their lineup. Good evening. The latest statistics from Stats Canada prove what most Canadians already know. StatsCan says the national unemployment rate has climbed to 8.8%. In Ontario, the new figure is now at 7.2. Analysts and union leaders are concerned about the lack of solutions on the horizon. Brenda Craig reports. More than one million Canadians are looking for work. Not since 1987 have so many people been unemployed across the country. Statistics Canada says it's mostly older men and women. In the last 12 months, the national unemployment rate has jumped 1.3 percent, from 7.5 to 8.8. .8. It's the biggest year-to-year -year jump in the jobless rate since the recession of 1982. In Ontario, the unemployment rate has jumped sharply in the last year, up from 5 to 7.2 percent. The recession is already the second worst recession that the Canadian economy has had since the 1930s. Whether or not it will be the worst recession remains to be seen. Statistics Canada says 133,000 jobs have been lost in the manufacturing sector alone. Almost half of those jobs are in Ontario and the electrical workers have been hard hit. Based on the latest figures from Stats Canada, there has been a decline of 8,000 members in that industry. 6,000 of the 8,000 are here in Ontario. We represent many of those workers. Economists predict that the national unemployment rate will reach 10% before the recession bottoms out. In Ontario, the Ontario Federation of Labour expects it to hit at least eight. When you fall over a cliff, uh, you don't really know how far you're going to go until you actually hit bottom. As you saw in Brenda Craig's report, Ontario's unemployment rate has increased more than 2% over last year. The provincial level is now 7.2%. In the Barrie region, the figure is 7.1, an increase over last year of 2.5. Officials at the Barrie Employment Centre say the new job opportunities are down more than 20%, with the greatest slowdown occurring in the construction and manufacturing sectors. The new Ontario government is keeping its promise about fiscal responsibility. Today, the provincial government announced it will not be forwarding its $55 million contribution towards the Ballet Opera House in Toronto. The multi-million dollar project is not being shelved completely, but the move by the province is forcing the City of Toronto to hold on to its $20 million contribution. Two of Ontario's novice cabinet ministers face the supporters of the Ballet Opera House. Today's announcement was a signal that all projects are now being reviewed by the new NDP government. We just cannot at this time give an ongoing cash commitment, a funding commitment, to this project, one large project in, in downtown Toronto. You will appreciate that we are uh, very shocked and disappointed. The $300 million Ballet Opera House was slated to be built in downtown Toronto. The province will still donate the $5 million site at the intersection of Bay and Wellesley in downtown Toronto. And plans are still going ahead for affordable housing on nearby land. The Ontario government and politicians from the Greater Toronto Region are about to square off over a garbage site. But standing in the way of this battle is a small community in Pickering. We get more details from Hamlin Grange. The tiny village of Whitevale and its 300 residents are caught in the middle. Between a proposed dump for millions of tons of garbage on prime farmland and an election promise by the NDP government, there'd never be a dump in Whitevale. There's no doubt about it that we feel that we're hostages here. During the campaign, the NDP promised there'd never be a dump in Whitevale without a lengthy environmental hearing, a hearing that could take up to eight years. The previous Liberal government would have put the Whitevale site through a one-year process, giving Metro a place to put its garbage when its dumps are filled in three years. But the residents of Whitevale didn't want that, so nearly all of them voted NDP. There's always the, the uh, politicians that come out and say, well, we can't do this because of this and this and this, sorry, we promised it. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, Premier Bob will live up to, you know, his reputation. Environment Minister Ruth Greer has said she may keep the government's promise. Where that leaves Metro and the, and the municipality, uh, the regional municipality appeal, is that it really pulls the rug right out from underneath 
two of the interim sites that we had hoped to have in operation by uh, the middle of 1993. Metro and five other municipalities will meet next week with Greer to hammer out a compromise. Alan Tonk says the government will have to break his promise to avoid a crisis. We need to have those interim sites. Otherwise, there's going to be 14 million tons of garbage in the GTA uh, that are going to be illegally dumped in back uh, roads uh, uh, all over uh, southern Ontario. The chairman of Durham's Waste Management Committee agrees. The most important thing we want to impress on Mrs. Greer is the magnitude of the problem of waste in the province of Ontario and the immediacy of the problem. And it is immediate in that the entire system will collapse really in mid-1991. On November 20th, everyone will know what the province intends to do about the garbage crisis. That's when the new government will present its speech from the throne. The residents of Whitevale say they'll all be there at Queen's Park to make sure the NDP government keeps its promise. Hamlin Grange, CBC News, Whitevale. The man accused of throwing a young baby out the window of a moving vehicle is now facing additional charges of attempted murder. The incident occurred Tuesday night in Whitby. 30-year-old Michael Bove appeared in court today. Bove is also facing charges of criminal negligence causing bodily harm. He's been denied bail. Bove is due back in court in a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, 11-month-old Chantal Freeman is now reported in fair condition. The 11-month-old girl suffered a fractured skull, a broken leg, and internal injuries. Doctors say Chantal could be out of intensive care in a couple of days. More than a dozen police officers in York Region helped the Maple family search for a missing elderly relative. Volunteers also joined the police and family members in the search for Karm Singh Punya. The 87-year-old man has been missing since last Tuesday. He's described as male, East Indian, 5 foot 6 inches tall, 140 pounds. He was dressed as he appears in this photograph. He definitely wasn't dressed for the weather. Uh, we're just hoping we can locate him safely, but uh, we're searching the area just to make sure he hasn't uh, uh, holed up in an abandoned building somewhere and that uh, you know, his age. We're hoping to find him safe, let's put it that way. Ironically, ironically, Punya lives just doors away from the house where a man was found shot to death on Wednesday. Police say there is no connection between the events. The man is identified as Eustace Compass. A post-mortem revealed that he had died of a gunshot wound to the head. This Sunday, Canadians will be pausing to remember its war veterans who died in the service of their country. Many veterans who lost limbs in war are now trying to teach children that there's no glory in going to battle. Stu Patterson reports. Nor is it pride. The War Amps Never Again videos show the horror of war, seeing young men barely past their teens experience the death and trauma that went with World Wars I and II and the Korean conflict. It's done from a Canadian point of view. These videos repeatedly hammer home the idea that war is not glamorous. In fact, that war is one of the most dehumanizing experiences possible. And that's something children don't think too much about. When I watch um, Transformers, they shoot, and sometimes they kick and punch. I have lost both legs, one below the knee and one above the knee. Mind you, I can still walk, not too bad. Harold Wilcox play. takes the glamour out of I war for kids. After checking out our War Amps video, they actually see what can happen in war. This is what we call an artificial lake. The War Amps warnings about the horrors of war they're being heard. It's not good for people fighting because you can get badly injured and you might have artificial legs and arms. An artist in Concord is working on a mammoth project. The six-figure masterpiece calls for 2,640 pounds of paint. Kevin Frankish has more. 25 years ago, Ken Kirkby got an idea. Today, with every stroke of the brush, that idea becomes reality. His idea, to paint the world's largest painting, 152 feet long and 12 feet high. Canada has the most beautiful and large backyard in the world, and I really have a need to portray that to our people. Kirkby has a love affair with the Arctic and its people, the Inuit. This is an expression of that love, but it doesn't end there. 
When the mural is finished, it will be unveiled in the north along with a symphony composed especially for this project. Together they will be called Isumatak, an Inuit word meaning someone whose presence and wisdom has a chance to be seen. The symphony's composer is Nick Peros. This whole thing is uniquely Canadian. The place is uniquely Canadian. The natives, the people, is uniquely Canadian. And what it's being combined with musically is uniquely a Canadian heritage and musical culture. Soon, bidding will start in an auction for Kirkby's painting. He expects it will sell for several million dollars. He will keep a lot of the money, but some will go to the Inuit people. I'm, I'm a painter, so I'm using painting as my way of, of being a Canadian. In Concord, Kevin Frankish, Total News. And here's the unofficial winning number in today's provincial lottery draw. It is 1680599. Once again, 1680599. Good luck to everyone. And so to come on Total News, the Maple Leafs have shuffled their lineup with a few trades and call-ups. Doug Wilson will have the details in sports. It's still hanging in at just around the freezing mark. We'll have all your weekend weather coming up next. Domino Rally set, let's you. And with the Deluxe Domino Rally set, you can actually or get several sets and go. Domino Rally, basic, intermediate, deluxe, or new neon Domino Rally. Each set sold separately. I want to talk to Mom and Dad about sex, but... If I bring it up, they'll probably think I'm doing it. I want to talk about it. I hope I don't get embarrassed. I remember all the questions I had. I should break the ice. We know that sex can be one of the hardest topics to discuss with anyone. But remember, when you need answers to some pretty big questions, the best ones are close to home. Talk it out. A message from the Simcoe County District Health Unit. The new Super Mop from Sunglow. It's the great new way to clean your floors with its super large cellulose sponge. It soaks up almost twice as much water as other sponge mops. Its built-in scrubbing strip attacks stubborn floor marks quickly, while the easy sliding handle makes wringing out the sponge a breeze. Its unique design means easy handling around corners and no more bending. And when you buy a Super, you get the best warranty in the business. Three years or 50,000 kilometers. The new Super Mop from Sunglow. Test drive one today. Hi, I'm John McFadgen. There's a lively debate ongoing about the future of government in Simcoe County. On the one side are those who want things left unchanged. On the other, the people who argue the county must restructure to meet residents' demands. On our next focal point, we join the debate as politicians and ratepayers discuss the options being considered for Simcoe County. That's County Line, Sunday, November 18th at 2 p.m. on CKVR, television to explore. Bob McIntyre joins us now for the weekend check on weather, and I know there might be a few football players in Barrie out there watching tonight for that big final tomorrow afternoon. I think it's going to be a lot of fun because it's a nice soggy day. The footing will be crummy, and by about the second half, you won't be able to read a number out there. It'll be nice and muddy. I love playing football like that. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. I get a kick out of it. At least I did. I don't know. You are a quarterback. Mind you, I like you. Yeah, but I was like flat in my back all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be one of those nice fall days where we'll be a little on the wet side. You might see a flurry, but you also might see a pile of sunshine. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Let's have a look at our current conditions right now, and they look like this. Outside our CKVR studio, sitting in plus one at the moment, humidity's way up there at 98%. Southeasterly winds have been up to 22 kilometers an hour this evening, and the barometric pressure, which was way up at 1028 last night, is sitting at 1011 right now. Here's a look at the map, and it looks like this for tomorrow. This high pressure system looks like it's going to scoot in here nice and quickly because as it does, it means we're going to have some sunshine. There's also going to be what's called some hangback cloud off that little trough that's sitting right there. And that means that there's still a possibility we're going to have some flurries off southern Georgian Bay tomorrow. Between the pair of them, it looks like that. So let's have a look at our temperatures for tomorrow morning. 
and they look like this. When you get up, you may see a little bit of sunshine. You also may see some flurries or some rain, depending upon where you live. Uh, temperatures tomorrow morning, say around plus 1 or 33 Fahrenheit. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 707. Sun will set at 459. And let's have a quick look at temperatures for tomorrow. They're not going to be particularly warm. Four degrees everywhere. Doesn't matter where you go, it'll be right around that range. Now here's our forecast. Our weather pictures today are from Barry, and that's looking down the hill from our studio. Here's the forecast. As we go through the night, some flurries or some showers. It's been raining in Barry and across much of our broadcasting area. Temperatures still around the freezing mark. And let's have a quick look at tomorrow now. And tomorrow shows some sun, some clouds. We look like we're going to have a flurry or two westerly winds, southwesterly that is, up to 40 kilometers an hour at times. Let's have a look at the rest of the forecast. On Sunday, we're going to continue with the chance of flurries coming off southern Georgian Bay, only four degrees. Three on Monday, we're going to continue with the flurries off southern Georgian Bay. But look, we're going to have a pile of sunshine too. So uh, you might see some clouds, you'll see some sunshine. And then Tuesday, the same kind of forecast. Some of my favorite places tomorrow. In Divine Lake, we're going to see flurries and plus three. And flurries and rain along with some sunshine over in Honeywood. Four degrees, the same kind of forecast for Lake St. George. And we'll spell Divine Lake with an E next time, where the, the D is. And in Jefferson, some flurries and some rain, along with sunshine, a plus four. And in Bridgetown, Barbados, where Hugh Black likes to go. It's sunny and plus 30 tomorrow, 86 degrees. Ooh, that's nice. A couple of Red Star events. In Holly, just down the road from our station, there's a Christmas sale of handicrafts and baking. It's on from 10 till noon in the Holly Community Center on Harvey Road. Go, you might find just what you're looking for. And in Aurora tomorrow, the York Pines United Church is holding its annual bazaar. It's in the church from 1.30 till 4, and they have all kinds of stuff along with the tea room, home-built cookies, and squares and sandwiches. So tonight, we'll get rid of all this glop, get it out of the way, see a little bit of sunshine tomorrow, be a little on the breezy side, and for that football game down at Central, looks like it might be a mutter down there. <laughs> so uh, be prepared. Yeah. Okay, time now for a check on sports. We're joined by Doug Wilson, and the Leafs have been shuffling their cards. Yes, and uh, they've needed to, as everybody knows as well. We'll have all the details right after this. special people on your Christmas list. Get a radio-controlled action vehicle from Radio Shack. For the best price, quality, and selection, Radio Shack is your Christmas wonderland. Radio Shack, Dutch Technology. A legend in country and western music, Stop and Tom Connors. And a girl turned out to bingo, and the boys are getting stinkle. We think no more of bingo on a Sudbury Saturday night. Stop and Tom Connors has traveled the world over singing his songs of Canada that made him famous. Now, Capitol Records and Atlantis Direct Marketing present a special collection of his greatest hits. Stop and Tom Connors, a proud Canadian. When the big moon shines in the maritime on the old Atlantic shore. Stop and Tom's music reflects the true Canadian way of life and the people who share in it. Katie Lang, Katie Lang. Stop and Tom Connors, as a proud Canadian, would like to dedicate this new album of his greatest hits to all the people who share in our great heritage. This album is for you. The best man in Ottawa was Maparajo. A great album by a great Canadian. Stop and Tom Connors, a proud Canadian. 20 of his greatest hits on two LPs or two cassettes, $14.95, one compact disc, $19.95. Here's how to order. Use your credit card and call toll-free 1-800-248-2211 or send check or money order for $14.95 for two records or two cassettes or $19.95 for one compact disc plus $3 shipping and handling to Stomp and Tom Connors, Box 8000, Barrie, Ontario or call 1-800-248-2211 1-800-248-2211 Good evening, everyone. Well, big news from the Toronto Blue Jays tonight. They lost starting pitcher, left-handed free agent starter Bud Black, who signed with the San Francisco Giants late this afternoon. Black agreed to a four-year, $10 million contract, and that puts a big hole in the Jays' pitching staff right now. So once again, Bud Black has signed with the San Francisco Giants a four-year deal 
and once again he is off to the west coast now let's check all the hockey tonight first of all we'll start with the Newmarket Saints and they were on the road and tied for fourth heading into tonight's contest against the second place Adirondack Red Wings in the southern division however they lost it six to three the final the Saints winless in their last three games and they will be in Springfield tomorrow night on to the NHL now and lots of wheeling and dealing by the Leafs today in an attempt to shake the team up General Manager Floyd Smith actually made two trades, and the CBC's Bruce Dobigan has the story on one of them. We feel like getting Krizanowski that uh, we're going to get a, an experienced centerman who will definitely help our hockey club immediately. If Floyd Smith is a little unsure who he's just traded for, he is certain that Mike Krusielniski has got to be better than most of the players he's seen in blue and white so far this season. Of course, he's not happy to get rid of scrappy young John McIntyre, who only last night pounded out Peter Nedved of Vancouver, but he needs a veteran center like Crucial Niski to replace the injured Tom Fergus and give him some depth. For his part, McIntyre is pleasantly surprised to be heading for Southern California and Wayne Gretzky. As far as the rumors are going, I really haven't been listening to the rumors, so I just found out a few minutes ago. And like I said, uh, you know, I'm disappointed to be leaving Toronto, especially in the way the team is right now, but you know, hopefully with... Uh, with the way things work out, then uh, you know, hopefully the, the Leafs will improve and hopefully I can go out there and, and help the Kings improve. Unfortunately for Floyd Smith, he must stay in Toronto and try to make a deal. A task he says is more daunting now than it was this summer. We tried to better our hockey club. We weren't in the position to do it. Some of the people that we would have had to given up in the summer, we didn't want to give up. Today might be a different story. And the other deal, the Saints, Steve Bank, uh, the Saints, Steve Bancroft, yes, who was a first rounder back in 1989, goes to Boston for Rob Semetta, who quit the Bruins weeks ago and was sitting at home in Toronto. Good news for Barry's Doug Shedden. He has been called up along with defenseman Brian Blatt and forward Joe Sacco. For Shedden, he needs just seven games to collect his full NHL pension. And I talked to him tonight. He's been told he will dress tomorrow against the Hawks. And Alan Bester moves down to the Saints. He's recovering from a heel injury. Three games in the NHL tonight. Winnipeg over Hartford 5-2 in the third period of play. Buffalo all over Vancouver. Final score of 7-1. And New Jersey lost again. This time 3-2 to the New York Rangers. The Rangers' eighth win and 11 games. John McClain had a pair for the Devils. In the first period of the game, with no score, the New York Rangers in blue. That's Jan Eriksson carrying the puck. He'll split the defense. He comes in and beats Chris Terreri, giving the Rangers a one to nothing lead over the New Jersey Devils in the Meadowlands. Later in the first period, the Rangers would add to that lead, stealing the puck of the Devils. It'll be Darren Turcott who gets off a beautiful wrist shot. It will go right past the glove hand of Chris Terreri, the goaltender. That made it 2 nothing. New York Rangers with a lead. In the second period with the Rangers leading three to nothing, Peter Stastny of the Devils will make a perfect picture pass to John McLean. McLean puts it behind Van Beesbrook. That made it three to one. The Devils would continue their comeback. Late in the game, trailing three to one, the Devils' John McLean on a rebound would get his second goal of the game. That made it three to two, and that was the final Rangers over the Devils. I'm George Michael for NBC News. A big day for Bradford District High School. For the first time ever, the football program is celebrating a Georgian Bay Championship. The Junior Buccaneers hosted the Collingwood Fighting Owls, and with 21 players, they managed to win by 15 points. First quarter, Collingwood grabbed the lead. Greg Howard rambles in from 20 yards, 7 to nothing Owls. But Bradford strike early second quarter. Ken Brokart goes in from 10 yards. The two-point attempt, no good. 7 to 6. One of the key plays of the ball game, Bradford's Chris Lamentia recovers the kickoff deep in Collingwood territory. That sets up this great bootleg by quarterback Tom Sawyer. So good it fooled the Owls defense and our cameraman. 25 yards in total, 14 to 7 the Bucks in front at halftime. Third quarter, Bradford keep the ball for nine minutes and cap off the drive. Jarrett Stam motors 35 yards, 20 to seven, and he flips over that touchdown. Then after another kickoff recovery, they start to pull away as Brokart plows over from two yards to make it 26-7. Collingwood make a minor attempt to come back on Howard's second major of the afternoon, 26-13 early in the fourth quarter. 
but the Bucks outscore the Owls 14 to 12 the rest of the way. The final score, Bradford 40, Collingwood 25. The Buccaneers' first ever junior football championship. And the ball control was great for you guys. Yeah, we kept the ball, we kept driving, we did long drives, we kept the ball, wasted time on the clock. It was, it was great. Like we had the ball probably, I don't know, three quarters of the game, it seemed like, and that, I, I thought that was key going in, and we, and we did that. So. And, well, you had 21 guys in the roster. Pretty impressive. You had a gutsy little ball team oh, here. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier to coach because you don't have to look at those other 40 players. When you got the 21 best athletes in the county, what can you do? What can you do is win a championship. Congratulations. CFL playoffs this Sunday. The Western semifinal has Saskatchewan at Edmonton in a rematch of last year's final. Game time is 4.30 out west. And the early contest has the Argos against the Red Riders at the Dome at 1.30. The game is blacked out in this area. Riders defensive lineman Bruce Holmes will not be playing. His one-game suspension was upheld by a judge. I'm upset, but um, I'm not worried about it. I think uh, we'll come back with the victim in Toronto. So I, I think... Um, Actually, I think the decision has motivated the ball club, and um, I think they'll go down there. It's going to be a real physical game down this week. We're going to be wide open and very aggressive offensively. Defensively, we're going to try to play aggressive football and uh, block punts on special teams or try to return. We're going to attack the other team. And in the NBA tonight, a great matchup at the Boston Garden between the Celtics and the Chicago Bulls. First half of the game, the Chicago Bulls in red. Nice ball movement. Bounce pass to Michael Jordan. Jordan on the drive would get 41 points as the Bulls jump off to an early lead over the unbeaten Celtics. For Boston, inside. Rookie D. Brown gets caught in traffic, loses the basketball. Back the other way, it's B.J. Armstrong. Bounce pass to Dennis Hobson on the jam. The Bulls would lead 60-57 to at the half as Chris Ford would wonder where the offense had gone. Late in the third quarter, D. Brown working to Larry Bird. Bird off balance shot. He gets the basket. 21 points for Larry Bird. The Celtics were within four. But the Celtics would turn it right back over. Scottie Pippen will go ahead to Michael Jordan. The Bulls give the Celtics their first loss of the year, 120 to 101. I'm George Michael for NBC News. And just a reminder once again, the Georgia Bay Senior Football Championship, 1.30 tomorrow afternoon at Barry Central, Barry North versus Central. The Barry North, or actually Barry North, trying to knock off Central, who are going there for their fifth straight title. And uh, the weather tomorrow? The weather will be interesting tomorrow. You'll see some sun, some clouds, and maybe some flurries. And TJF, thank goodness it's Friday. If you have to oh, work this weekend, oh, we hope geez. you make a potload of money. <laughs> you have to work this weekend to make up and practice for that one. That's all the time we have for tonight's report. For Bob and Doug and the rest of the crew, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your weekend. Good night. Broadcast.